All right, welcome in to Tooth and Tail Talks, episode four. We've got regular guests with us, Kipo and Satoros. Kipo and Satoros, if you guys want to introduce yourself. What up, everybody? How's it going? It's Kipo. Hey, so it's Toros here again. Uh, too bad we missed last week, but I'm glad we're back again. Yeah. So, just had one week off. There was uh, some stuff going on, but we're back to it. Let's dig right into the Pocketbot Cup from the last couple of weeks here. Give shout-outs to the uh, folks who won those. Uh, so, Taurus, if you want to take that away. Yeah, sure. So, again, we uh, didn't have an episode last week, so I want to start with the PBCs on the 7th of June. And uh, just going to go quickly through the results. Uh, no surprise for the European Cup that week. Uh, Tatanka did take first, uh, followed by Meek. And uh, coming in third was actually Trumpet. It was actually a very big tournament, so it's uh, very impressive uh, for all those players to get that far. Um, now, by very big, big, how many players about did you were there? Do you know? Uh, I think there was at least 10 people. Uh, so bigger than most of the PBCs. I think it was a holiday uh, Monday. That's why there were a lot more participants. Oh yeah, that might have been Memorial Day or no, no, not Memorial Day, but something. yeah, I think it was Memorial Day. Yeah. Anyways, um, so that was on the European side, and then on the American side, uh, we actually had Trumpet taking first, uh, and then Zenza just taking second, uh, and Kippo coming in third there. And then if we fast forward to this week on Monday, on European side, there was no Tatanka this time, um, just to have that as a mental note. Um, that's why you don't see him in the top three. Uh, coming in first was Melvin Fro, uh, followed by Lego Man, and uh, Zen's Edge actually getting third in that one also. He's definitely started to put in some uh, pretty good results in PBCs. Um, I think he uh, won over Tosh in the third place match, so very impressive by him. And then uh, on the American side, we did have Tatanka coming in first again, uh, Heartseed actually coming in second, and uh, myself, Satoris, coming in third. Um, and I just want to shout out to Heartseed for taking a game off of Tatanka. Um, <laughs> very, very uh, well played game where he, he took a slight edge in an early fight, and then he just completely contained Tatanka and basically used ferrets to siege him down and managed to win a close game where he actually still got wolf owl but uh he just got so behind on economy that um heartsy was actually just able to mass tier one and still eventually just kill him so it was a very fun game to watch but tatanka still ended up winning the series yeah i uh i was just saying earlier on the cast heartseed is is getting good and he's been good but he's getting better yeah definitely i think uh he, play, he has a very particular style <laughs> that is not the uh, normal metagame style you might see, but he's played with it for so long now that he really understands it well. And um, he has a lot more experience now than he did before. And his, yeah, his micro has definitely been very, very good lately. So he, he's definitely firing on all cylinders, I think. Yeah, and if you talk to him, he has a really great understanding of the game. Uh, I, I was in Discord with him last week, and I, I was playing, and he was like, oh, you should make this move. You should think about doing that. And he's saying all these things that I'm like, oh, my God, yeah, you're right, absolutely. So he, he, his game knowledge and his uh, intuition and instinct are, are really on point, and he's very successful for, for refusing to play the meta. Uh, yeah, I mean, shout-outs to Sensej and Trumpet. Trumpet is active on ladder. It's no surprise to me that he's, uh, you know, winning these tournaments or getting second and third and sensei's like he doesn't play ladder too much but i always see him in the ppc and he always seems to do really well and whenever i match up against him uh, the rare occasions in which i do it's it's always a challenge and it's always a good game so and then melvin you know he was he was the original og he was always the king of pbcs winning back to back to back to back to back uh, which is now it looks like Trumpet has sort of, not Trumpet, Tatanka has sort of taken the, the belt from Melvin Fro. Um, but, but it's cool. I think it's, I think it's good when you have 
uh, one player and whether it be an rts chess or anything who is definitively the best um so it's it's interesting i always enjoy watching his games and i'll have to go check out tatanka versus heartseed to watch that game where heartseed won and uh, maybe take some notes yeah it's yep. it's the cool to have the challenging or the the uh, kind of the king and the challenger uh narrative where even if you know flash doesn't win every game that he plays there's always this narrative of who's going to beat flash this time or whatever in starcraft and so i think it's a really right. cool hype kind of situation to have one really really extra strong player for sure and, and it it means the game is well balanced and that it's not rng like if you have a different winner each time you could say oh this game is rng but no it's it, this game is not because how could it wouldn't be winning every single game if it was yeah yeah for sure and uh yeah i, I thought the uh i think that that series between Tatanka and Heartseed for the most recent American PPC. That was casted by Tandor and QQ, I think, was there also. So that was entertaining. If you want to go back to Tandor's VODs. Oh, yeah. I shout, out to, watching it. shout out to QQ. He also casted some, so there's VODs on his channel. But that was, uh, I think, his first time I've co-casted with him, and that was so much fun. Uh, That's I think awesome. It's, what is he on Twitch? Uh, what is the Twitch name for him? Uh, Tickle Bandit, I think. Tickle Bandit, that's right. Thank ah. you. Yeah, excellent, excellent caster. Great personality. All right. So, uh, is that about it for the Pocketbot Cups this these last couple weeks, Sataros? Yeah, I think that's it. All right, we've got another one tomorrow, so don't miss out if you've got the time. There's three of them uh, going on throughout the day. So... Let's see, moving on to community highlights this week. We've got Ladder Watch from Kipo. Take it away. Yes. Let me take a look. Not So there hasn't been that much activity on Ladder, and, and I'm going to get into why. Uh, for Ranked, nothing has changed. It's still Tatanka in first, Tatanka in second, and Haru in third. Weekly Ladder, we did have a bit of a mix-up. Um, and we had Kolaru in first. Followed by Leon, followed by Ashitaka. Okay. And in in the most games played, we had uh, Zlatan in first with 23 games played this week, followed by Leon with 12, followed by Ashitaka with six. Now, you can't talk about these ladder rankings and the weekly games without talking about the impact on tooth and tail uh that this that this bug this mac bug has had right i mean just two weeks ago two three weeks ago it, it was it was meek night slayer and tatanka and they were playing you know 50 60 even 70 games right um but the numbers are just a third of what they were just a few weeks ago i mean 23 games from from Slatan, which is pyro uh, 12 from Leon and Ashitaka with six. I mean, these numbers are are scary, to be quite honest. And it's um, th there has to be a correlation here with what's happening since Mac players basically can't play the game. So, yeah, I I genuinely hope that this bug gets fixed and it gets fixed fast and soon. I know it, it, all the devs know about it. Everyone's aware of it. Night Slayer has, has uh, raised the alarm bells along with a few others. And I know that they're working on it. Uh, not only Eel, but the actual creator of the game as well. Um, so we're just going to have to see if they can get this figured out. And hopefully they can get it figured out soon. Because it definitely is having an impact on both the competitive scene and just the ladder. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, all of the tournaments that are going on right right now are, are like kind of put on hold for any Mac players, unfortunately, as well. Um, but you know what? Um, that doesn't take away from the accomplishments of the weekly uh, the players here. Um, I hit Slatan on ladder. Um, whenever I streamed last, I think that was last Tuesday. I was playing a bit on ladder and I hit him a couple of times. So those were good games as well. So, uh, next we've got unit discussion discord there, Kipo, an update from that. 
Sure. So I want to um, rope in my little highlight here because I have I've got a bit of a discussion on Discord. I wanted to I wanted to bring up. I know we talked about it last time, um, but I wanted to just briefly review it again. I have some thoughts from players like um, from players like Tiki Gray, but they sort of relate to this highlight here. And uh, you could just put it on mute and let me know when it's queued up. But basically, this highlight is from the King of the Hill tournament. And we have two of the best players. I mean, so we have Night Slayer and we have Tatanka, right? So Night Slayer is like, I think he's ranked five on, he's ranked four or five on ladder right now. Uh, and then we obviously have Tatanka, who's, who's ranked one and two. So we're going to play this highlight. But before we do, uh, I'm just going to give you a brief landscape, a brief overview of, of what we're watching here. So this is um, Tatanka. He's playing a signature style of Snake, Skunk, Squirrel, Toad, Owl, Wolf. And we have Night Slayer, who's playing his Tier 2 standard, right? His Aerolute build, his Squirrel, Toad, and then the four Tier 2s. And Night Slayer actually did this. They, both players played the same exact build uh, over and over again for three games in a row. We're going to watch how this uh, pans out. You could hit play, Tandor. And... Um, and and we're going to talk about it, and I'm and I'm I want to talk about it in tandem with what Amari and Tiki Gray uh, have had to say as well. So, uh, you know, we have both teams just building up. It's a completely even game. Is this the 45-30? Uh, I started well, about thirty seconds sooner. Okay, okay. So yeah, <laughs> I might have given you the wrong the wrong time signature, but we'll get to the uh, we'll get to. To the point that I wanted to highlight and discuss eventually, I suppose. But yeah, you know, give it, we have give it both... about ten seconds here. Right. So we have both teams just basically building up, um, and what we're going to see, and what we see with this, when when you're going up against Tatanka, uh, I've done this. I'm Satoris. I know you've done this, Tandor. Uh, I'm not sure if you've run into Tatanka recently, right? But he gets out two tier threes at the same time, which on paper is extremely greedy. And you'd expect someone to be vulnerable who goes for two tier threes at once, right? So much economy that they're not putting into their army or defense, um, which surely one would be able to break, uh, which is what we see Night Slayer attempting to do for three games in a row, right? So we're going, to need, we're going to see Night Slayer, you know, once again, basically one of the best players out there, uh, try to break Tatanka, who has so much food invested into two tier threes. And we're going to watch the engage. And he obviously has a superior army. He has good toad connects, right? His chameleons are absolutely doing work. Um, and he's, he's breaking through. And look, he's killing pig after pig after pig after pig. And it looks like a good attack, like, like, Sure, like he got some damage done. He might have gotten a warren. He got a bunch of pigs, um, and, and you could you could pause it whenever you want. We're not going to go through the rest of the game because it's more or less a foregone conclusion, right? So he he does this push, which looks really good, where he does a lot of damage. Um, but I'll see. I'll spare you from the rest of the game. Essentially, the wolf owl is able to conquer and is able to push Tatanka through to victory. So. You know, my question for y'all is, you know, is this the standard meta? Is this the best way to play the game? Amari on Discord this week said, well, basically Toads counter everything. She said the Falcon timing or a Falcon tier two timing attack is actually slower than getting two times tier three. You have about a 10 second window to push through an entire base when you're doing a, a tier two timing attack, as we just saw against this double tier three style. She says it's not remotely doable with any build. And the only way you could do it is with the burst of the Falcon, which according to Amari has been over nerfed. Tiki Gray then comes in saying Wolf Owl Snake Skunk is just too strong. Timing attacks are impossible and to macro against it is pointless. So, I know we talked about this last time, but I want to hear your thoughts. I mean, we, we see Night Slayer trying to bust. We see Amari and Tiki saying, this build is just insane. Um, is this the metagame? Have we finally found it? The patch has been out for, what, seven months? And now people are running this build, and they're, 
people like Amari and Tiki are saying it's the best way to play the game. So, so what do y'all think? I'm going to jump in and say one maybe controversial thing, and that is there's a missing piece in the timing attack that we haven't really been able to use for the last seven months. And that is yep. when you have a timing attack, it takes you time to get across the map. And in that time, you know, any any timing attack window is pretty narrow. And say you've got 10 seconds. The time it takes you to walk across the map is like four or five seconds of that time. And then you get to do some damage and then the, the window is over and you haven't done enough. Probably haven't done enough. The missing piece here is moles because you can put moles out halfway through your push at your opponent's base halfway there or something and they pop out really quick and add a lot of flexibility to an army because it has one more unit type to you know soak toad hits or something like that um or just more dps or you know maybe a bit of after the main fight you've got moles hitting on warrens or bases or something so i think that's a missing piece that we haven't really been able to use as much because they lose so much value once you have to back up if the timing attack doesn't work but with this patch where moles are less inefficient that missing piece might come back so that's that was my initial kind of not sure if it's accurate but that's my, my thought yeah so first of all i think you make a great point i think once moles are changed this isn't gonna be quite as powerful because i mean uh just being able to plop down a whole bunch of moles near your opponent's base and just take it out their second mill for example is just gonna be so much easier um and uh i i will say again i've watched a lot of tatanka games at this point uh and i've seen a lot of people lose to tatanka um now i i have first the first thing i would just point out is not i haven't seen that many people do wolf owl besides tatanka like yes i've seen melvin fro try it i've seen a couple other people try it but Tataka is the only one running around just murdering everybody with it. <laughs> Anyways, from what I've seen. So obviously it doesn't mean it's not good. I, I'm not trying to say that. I do. I honestly do think it's probably the strongest deck right now. Um, but the other thing is, I feel like a lot of people's approaches have been uh, kind of based on the whole tier two idea. Uh, it, cause that's the way it's kind of been for many patches is you kind of just have a tier two army be your core army. Um, and yeah, there's just not like with a traditional tier two build and a tier two push, like it's very hard to get enough damage before they get tier three up. It's just really difficult. You don't have that much of a window. Like you, you have to be ready to attack before you actually see them building the, the tier three. And in that case, they can just delay it, and like there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, ways it can't work. But but that being said, like I've still seen success with other types of aggression or attacks. Well, I mean, very simply, the game we talked about previously, where um, Heartseed beat Tatanka, and it was against that exact deck, that Wolf Owl deck. And the whole the whole point is he was able to kill Tatanka's second mill with ferrets of all things and just use his massive economy lead to eventually snowball the game. Um, it's, you know, it's uh, it's not like there's no way to beat it. It's just very difficult to beat it. And it involves a lot of risk. I think that's one of the reasons why I do consider Wolf Owl the best. It's, it's such low risk. Like you just, you play a regular you know squirrel toad opening you go into you know skunk and snake which is very solid tier two composition and then whenever is a good opportunity you place down the wolf and then the owl soon after and you know you're off to the races so it's just you know it's such a solid and safe build that yeah it's it's probably the best but i it's far from there being no way to beat it um do you think one of the uh, reasons for that is that it takes so much micro to pull off? For example, in that fight between Tatanka and Night Slayer that was highlighted, Night Slayer had a pretty significant army lead and still only managed to kill three or four pigs and, the, and trade armies. So the damage was good, but not as good as it could have been maybe if Tatanka's micro hadn't been 
as strong. So do you think the uh, the amount of money that you put into the double tier three it might be too much for someone who doesn't have quite as strong micro? Do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it is it actually riskier than we think because the tank is actually just very good at holding off things with his squirrel toad snake skunk? And yeah, other, I... and other people aren't quite as good at that. I mean, obviously micro helps, right? The better your micro is, the more efficiently you're going to take trades and the, you know, the easier you're going to be able to hold on if you get attacked. Yeah, but it's um, not just about trading more efficiently. It's the fact that you have to trade efficiently enough to survive, right? So it, it's yeah. not like extra value. It's it's absolutely necessary to get that extra value in it, that case, right? Yeah, and again, the a, a lot of times it does hinge on to whether you lose your second mill or not. Right. Um, and sometimes you can lose your second mill and still win, but uh, it kind of depends. But you're right. It, it Just a little bit better micro can make the difference between losing your mill and just barely holding on to it. Uh, you're right. That is a, a big deal. Um, but I think uh, <laughs> Tataka's micro is good, but his decision making is the reason he's the best player. Right. Yeah, At fair. least that's why he wins so often. He knows exactly when to place the tier three. He, he you know, figures out, okay, you know, we're very even or i'm slightly ahead this is a perfect time for me to place it down instead of if like for example he he's very rarely is he greedy to the point where he'll like drop tier three before he has both skunk and snake or at least has a good army matchup against the opponent where it feels comfortable doing it um so i, I think a lot of other players that don't have as much experience with the build might blunder when they put the tier three down and then just straight up lose to a push because they don't they don't anticipate what their opponent's doing and they don't correctly evaluate how well their army can defend right right now it's interesting that he does all of this without use of structures i keep i'm curious what you're what you think about that it's, idea yeah i mean it's it's the toads for like the tier one and the snakes for the tier two i mean Toads can pretty much, with their AoE, at this point in the game, burst down clumps of tier 1 very efficiently. And and what, snakes are the best unit at killing tier 2s, right? You just get one or two, like like two or three tags, depending on what tier 2 you're up against. And you just tag everything up. And then you have, you know, the skunks. It, the whole thing, it's just the best units, right? Like, they're, they're all so strong. And, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to add this is really a, a point of reflection where we could comment on on the greatness of this game the beauty of this game that th this patch has been out for what six seven months and only in the past couple of weeks we figured out what the meta actually is and and whether this is the meta game i i would say this is the the best build the meta build i don't think that that's um you know uh controversial um but for the game to be out and for it to be played and for there to be competitions and for us after seven months to finally figure out what the meta build is um, really speaks to how well this game is made, right? Um, and, and the beauty of this game that it took this long for us to get to this point in the meta. Uh, every, you know, that's just telling you that this game is well balanced and but there are multiple viable strategies. And even if we were on this patch for another, you know, three, four months, I'm not confident in saying that this build would continue to be the meta because of how in-depth the strategies are uh, and, and the variety of builds which you can use. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, think it's, I think it's a cool build. I think it's an interesting way to play the game. And um, I, I just appreciate the uh the development of the metagame i mean if you just step back and look at it over you know the past year from you know when era lose dominant using four tier two and moles to now to tonka's dominance and everything in between uh it, it's really cool it's a, it's a constantly evolving and changing landscape as an obvious example uh, that multiple styles really do work look at heartseed you know he's not the top player but he's up there, and he did take that game off of Tatanka. And his style that he's been playing almost exclusively, like, he's not like Meek, in that Meek will play a whole bunch, you know, every game in a best of five is going to be completely different. Um, you know, going from left field all the time, but 
Heartsea plays the same really, really off-meta deck really well all the time, and it works. So that's an example of kind of how well the, the game can be balanced that that kind of ridiculously off-meta play can actually work. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I, I think there's always going to be, unless there's some very different uh, changes that we see, there's always going to be multiple ways to play, right? Some might be stronger or weaker in a given meta game or just patch, but there's always going to be multiple ways to play. And that's that's the great thing about the game, for sure. I'll we'll have right. to see if this uh, <laughs> if this build can still succeed after this patch. Uh, I think I think it'll still be good. I don't think it'll be quite as much the answer to literally everything because Toads will be slightly nerfed, basically. It's the only unit in there that's directly being uh, heavily changed. Is right. And, and Tatanka might drop the Toads altogether. But I, I'm t Toads are still viable, but not as much the answer to everything. So if you know your opponent is playing Lizards, you're good. Otherwise, I don't think it'll be quite as dominant. Yeah. Maybe the Squizzard variation. Yeah. Well... I actually talked to Tatanka about this some, and uh, Toad, yeah, he he agrees that Toads aren't going to be in the deck <laughs> after the changes, and they're they're just going to be a little too narrow afterwards. Um, so uh, as to whether I think that deck's still going to be the best, no, no, I don't think so. I think I think multiple tier threes will become too greedy after moles are playable again. But I think it'll also take us, you know, half a year to figure out what will be the best. Oh yeah, I have no idea what's going to be the best. I'm I'm hoping there will be a lot of variety for a long time, but we'll see. So uh, next in the community highlights, I like to feature builds from my Discord um, since I actively ask for those off and on. And the one I want, actually, this one is going to be more of a question, um, and maybe we can design a couple of uh, builds that sound interesting for this idea. Uh, the idea is the timing push, right? So, if tier multiple tier twos is really strong right now, and structures aren't quite as strong um, for that kind of big army fight situation, then a timing push has to be one of the answers. Although Tiki has said that they're just not that good right now, but can we, as a panel, kind of come up with some ideas for a timing push that? could work um and, and i don't mean a poke or siege i mean a, a straight up timing attack push um yeah so yeah i'm sure we could do that yeah so let's let's start with just like a base for you know which tier one combo do you think would be best for some kind of timing is it squirrel toad or is it squizzard or is it something else <sighs> well i actually want to back up for a minute if you don't mind and if yeah. we're gonna make a deck First of all, every time, anytime you make a deck, this is good deck building practice. You have to know what your plan is. Obviously, you said let's do a timing push, right? So, what is a timing push? A timing push is where you, uh, all of your tactics and strategy throughout the game, build up to one specific point in time where you want to be, the the strongest your deck is going to be and you're going to use that big advantage to push and just win the game whether you literally win or you just get a huge economic advantage and win later that's how you win with a timing push so in that case what what units are good in a timing push so there's a couple things that come to mind i mean uh, again if you have ideas you can jump in but boar boar is kind of a classic timing push kind of unit because it has a huge immediate power spike as soon as it comes out um, and it uh, not only does it just demolish all tier one um, but obviously the big boar bomb at the end is very good it's very good at destroying buildings and warrens and mills so it's very good for getting damage done etc um, but yeah I, I snakes also very good at just doing damage when you do an attack again if you can fight the enemy army uh, and like, even if the armies are relatively close, but you're strong enough where you can just use your snakes to target fire their mill, then you trade armies, but then you also kill their mill. So you've done a 
tremendous amount of economic damage and you essentially win the game that way so anyways taking a step back that's that's what i view like a timing attack build to have is just some couple of very strong attacking units and then building the rest of the deck around it that makes sense uh keep i'm curious what your thoughts are before we get up too far into this thing yeah i i think you also have to identify uh when you want your timing attack to hit i i think yeah. i i yeah right so boar is is a strategy right that's what tatanka had used you know before he had transferred over to the owl meta that he's now developed um and and a two base boar falcon timing is still one of the best absolute best builds in the game and i always recommend new players to uh to use this and experiment with variations of boar falcon um it'll it'll bring a lot of success early on uh you won't have to go to three base and things like that um but when i when i play against tatanka i don't want to wait until a tier three comes out I want my timing to hit sooner. I want it to hit faster. And I want to knock him out before his wolf owl comes onto the table. Because chances are, when the boar comes up, he's already going to have his wolf owl. Uh, not to say that I think boar is bad versus wolf owl. I think it's definitely viable. Um, but, you know, going back to what you were saying earlier, Satoros, when you think... I want to do, let's say, you know, we're talking about timing attacks, but if I wanted to say I want to do a quick timing attack, no defense, obviously, no tier three. Um, you, you just you just need to get the best possible early game composition. Maybe you have one expansion with a few farms. Maybe you're doing it on one base. Um, and so those, those unit sets are sort of off the table, right? So... I mean, I have a build. I don't know how much I want to get into it. I'm going to bring up one unit, and then I'll throw it back to you, Tandor, for a possible timing push. I like to have a pigeon, right? Because if you have a pigeon, pigeons can be very um, impactful in the mid, in the early and the mid game. Not the super early. They're, they're irrelevant in the super early game. Um, but once you have a couple tier twos, let's say um, Snake and Skunk, for example, the value of the pigeon is immense. Because you never get enough DPS out that early in the game to really take down those tier two units. And with the pigeon support, they'll never go down and they'll always stay up. So I think a good early timing oriented build has got to include pigeon with a potential skunk snake uh, and other tier two or tier one combo. But I want to hear what you guys think. So let me narrow down the scope then. Uh, instead of simply timing push, because the Satoros makes some really good points, and keep on mentioning the uh, the Boar Falcon um, is an obvious classic timing push. Let's make the time that we want to hit a little bit sooner, so before tier three can realistically come out, um, except for maybe a, a one base like rush or something, and and just stick with the tier ones and the tier twos. Um, and I, I like the idea with the pigeon. So, Satoros, with that slight uh, scope reduction, what, what are your thoughts now? Yeah, so pigeons are definitely powerful for timing attacks, for sure. Because the, the whole idea with pigeons is to snowball your small victory into a game-winning victory. And what do I mean by that? If, for example, your opponent... Uh, a classic example is your opponent expands, you don't. Um, if in that case they spent more money on economy than you did um and in the case where they just build a mill and you haven't um if, if they don't build any farms off of it first of all they don't actually have an economic advantage um uh, but even like if they say build a farm or two then all of a sudden they're 120 to 180 food behind on army um, so the idea is, okay, if you just had a giant squirrel battle, okay, maybe you would win with some squirrels left over, but then the reinforcements would clean it up so you can really successfully attack there. Again, oversimplification, but that's the general idea. But if you combine attack advantage like skunks, for example, with pigeons, all of a sudden your you know, just barely winning a fight and having your two skunks survive and say, yay, I, I won a fight, turns into, you actually can't kill my skunks. It's just not possible because you end up, you know, 
covering the whole battlefield with gas and as the you know individual squirrels come out of their warrens you're able to clean them up and the pigeons are just constantly healing back all the damage and all of a sudden you just straight up win the game so uh, yeah pigeon pu uh, pushes are definitely very fun and can be very effective in that way uh generally speaking i've found they're the most useful when you're either doing a one base push or like a very early two base push uh, so again there's the very simple i just go i you expand i go early skunks and then just a, a couple of a couple more squirrels and just three pigeons and just push with that and again they need to have uh very either a specific unit composition like their own tier two or just very good micro to be able to hold that off. Um, again, the alternative that Kippo brought up is you can do uh, more of a two base variant where you have double tier two, you have the skunks and the snakes with the pigeons. And again, uh, that's also brings it back to if the snakes don't get killed fast enough, you can just focus fire their mill and their mill dies. Uh, especially when the snakes are being hailed by pigeons and the skunks are busy gassing their entire army. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of p possibilities there. So I've got pulled up here. I actually opened up the game again and just did a game against the CPU. I'm not playing it, but I've got the unit selection screen up. And I've got pulled up. Um, so we've got pigeons, we've got skunks, and we've got snakes. Um, we've, we've seen skunk pigeon stuff like you were saying work really well we've also seen the occasional snake pigeon work um but that's a little bit trickier uh, i've also got squirrels just kind of a, as a base and then uh to tank in the chat suggested throwing in falcons and moles that used to be a thing that was seen a bit more um what i've done this current patch at, attempted anyway is maybe instead of moles do toads so squirrel toad pigeon falcon skunk snake so that if you're going up against lizard players you've got toads and if you're not going to up against a lizard player you've got pigeons what do you guys think of that kind of a starting I, point i so i don't know if i agree with the falcon um i think falcon is one of the best units to have in the late game but i don't think they're good in the early game i think they're just too squishy they go they just they drop too quickly. If if your opponents has snakes and and they're microing them, it's just two tags, right? Um, I mean, you do have the pigeons here, but you know, I just I don't think they're as reliable as some of the other units that we have at play here. I, I mean, I like this with Toad Mole. I personally run the variation of Toad Lizard, and I found that to be very effective. But I don't know that foul and i could be wrong i, I i'd like to hear a, a counter argument but i don't know if a falcon has a place in the game for being a unit used in a very early push whether it's a one base or whether you have a second base but you have three farms and your opponent has you know six farms so that's your eco advantage going into the push so, i don't know that i bring falcon so um but you do like the skunk snake pigeon combo there um, yeah, you would just go with a different support around it, not the Falcon. I I don't know if I'd bring the Falcon. I think I'd bring Toad, and then I'd I'd have a debate yeah. between Mole and Lizard, and I, I like the Lizard variation, but I I I don't really see Falcon as uh, fitting into this very early timing attack centric build. Would you like also have Squirrel then too? So you'd have potentially yeah, yeah. four tier oh. ones. You have Squirrel Squirrel uh, Pigeon Snake. Um, skunk is uh, right. is like a dream. I mean, they all work in tandem with one another. They're all ranged. You can kite. Uh, they're not going to be, you know, falling early. So, but, okay. but I want to hear Satoros what you think about my thoughts on uh, on Falcon's place in this kind of deck and play yeah. style. Yeah. So I, I actually I happen to agree with uh, okay. what was said in. in um, by others that I actually do like Falcons in the deck, but I'll, I'll get to why. Um, so, in my opinion, 
like like Kippo said, the, the, there's four units that you auto lock here if you're doing this push. It's the it's the squirrels and pigeons, and it's the skunks and snakes, right? So those are your you just basically have to take those if you want to do this kind of push because that's what the whole deck is supposed to do. Uh, first. Uh, question you have to answer is how do you deal with the lizards? Because lizards actually kind of just deal with everything here. Yeah, technically you can get to like four skunks, but then you're kind of just playing a long defensive game and your deck's not really built to do that. So I do like either taking your own lizards or taking toads or even taking cams if you want to do that. I'm not sure that is really the best you're adding another tier two that you have to get maybe you would get it instead of skunks if they're going heavy lizards but regardless uh but if you have an answer to lizards i think your deck all of a sudden becomes solid right so let's pretend for argument's sake we'll just take toads right toads hard counter lizards we're good so what do we do with the last pick so again just with those five units i think you you're you're good you're covered for all of your early to mid game tier two pushes um so why falcons right why why would you add falcons to this deck so there's a couple of reasons um in my opinion um the very first thing is what happens if you get an advantage but you don't win that's uh again it could be as simple as i killed a second base i still have mine i just snowball my econ and i just eventually win that's great but there are going to be cases where, you know, what happens if you're going up against uh, somebody who's being very defensive, that's either having structures and a big army or is just not being greedy and is trying to go for a later game where they either get their own Falcons or their own tier three or something like that. Falcons are a simple way to make sure that you can scale into the late game. Again, it's I'm not saying it's required to take in this build, to me it feels natural because it's a, a natural extension uh like it fits very nicely with with this shell of skunk snake and uh squirrel it just kind of feels like a natural extension of that um the so... other nice thing about falcons is you can just kind of abuse the map like the fact that they're flying if you get a nice map for it you can do some really nasty like side attacks over cliffs and stuff like that like there are actually maps where i would just take falcons for the push there are definitely cases uh, where that would happen. So it's not like they're never going to be used uh, for offensive capability early on. It's they, They're definitely not going to be as good as like snakes and skunks, uh, to so, your point, and most of the time. So but, overall, you're agreeing that that's not really the best unit for the push. You would just like to have it in the deck and stick with five deck slots is enough for the timing push, and as the sixth one, you like the Falcon as a possible late game later game answer yeah basically i i would i would think you wouldn't use like 10 percent of the time you would put falcons for the push because just because the the map has a bunch of cliffs or whatever whatever um so what yeah, would you guys but it's think mostly then, for the utility if if we are mostly agreed that squirrel toad pigeon skunk snake is good five deck slots the toads are just there to deal with lizards otherwise they're not necessary and we're dealing with the four unit core. What would you guys think of adding moles then? Uh, because if I mentioned earlier, that's kind of a missing piece from a timing push. And it seemed like Tatank had solved timing pushes when Night Slayer kept pushing in, not quite doing enough damage, and then Tatanki gets his, his wolf owl out anyway. And I suggested maybe moles are the, the extra punch you need at that last minute to make sure all of your extra food is going into the current fight. What if that is the uh, the sixth deck slot? And maybe we're getting into next patch a little bit, but so, know, what do you guys think? Yeah, so so real quick on the Falcon thing, I, I agree that Falcon is the best way to build a well-rounded deck uh, because of the late game potential. So I would grab Falcons and I would just grind that on the ladder. But if I'm going up against this, uh, this double tier three and I just want to make an early timing attack, you know, I probably wouldn't grab them and now moles, right? So here's my thing with moles. Um, even if we're talking about the next patch, moles and toads have to engage separately in separate locations from separate flanks, and they have to be microed very carefully. Here's what you don't want. You don't want your toads and moles to be microed in the same little group going, going in a cluster 
into your opponent's army. Because if your opponent has toads, then it's just going to be a wash. Maybe some of your moles are going to survive, sure. But, but really, if you want to perfect the attack, you need to have your moles go in from one side and your toads come in from the other side so that your opponent's toads, that your opponent has to make a choice. Am I going to trade toad with toad? Or am I going to trade toad with mole and let his toads just smash into my front lines? Um, because if you have them together, it's just not, you're not going to get value off of it. Um, so I, I do think the moles can be viable, but I do think that the attacking into an, an, an opponent's mill um, with both toads and moles and having the positioning and the micro set up and executed perfectly is sort of a tall order. So if you were to include moles in the deck, would you drop the toads from the deck or would you just try to not play the two at the same time? Uh, I in a push? don't... I don't think you could afford to drop toads because they're too powerful in this patch. I think they're So what stable. about next patch then? Since in next patch it seems like they'll be relegated more to a specific anti lizard a less general. It's hard for me to say just because I, I need more experience and more exposure to the next patch to see really where toads are gonna rank. That's fair. That's fair. So if I'm gonna I'm gonna run with this for a second. So if we do drop toads, um, despite them being so strong all around and so important against armies in a in a small area, and we're running with squirrel pigeon, skunk snake as our core, and we add moles, what then if it's not toads? Is do we do what Sotaro says and and go with either cams or lizards because we're most worried about them having lizards? Or, um, or do we just say that's enough and get something for the late game, like a badger or a falcon or a boar or something? I just think that toads, moles, and cams are all melee units, and they all need to engage perfectly. You, you can't bring them both in the same control group in going in the same direction, or your opponent, your opponent's toads are just going to roll over them. So any combination of the two and your micro and positioning has to be on point for your attack okay so basically you're saying is you want you want one melee unit that needs microed not two in a fight that's a general rule in tooth and tail because you can't micro well, multiple things I, I would do two i do i would just be extremely mindful of how i'm going to execute and set up my attack oh okay okay so you're not saying we can't do it you just mean you just got to be good at it and and set it up oh. well and be mindful of the fact that you've got to be careful here that's that's what i found uh what do you think satoros uh short answer i i would take lizards uh <laughs> if, if you're gonna take moles uh instead of toads i'd just take lizards um i i do agree if you, once you have too many melee units it becomes real hard to micro those and they get in each other's way all that good stuff um i also just like how lizards gives you another angle offensively with this deck you know, having swift lizards to abuse, you know, open maps where their bases are split and that kind of thing. And again, it's a decent way to answer your opponent if they're going for uh, lizards, especially if you're going to be the attacker, you're going to have a bigger army. <laughs> a bigger lizard army against a smaller one is uh, usually pretty good. So, and I, yeah, I, I think it goes reasonably well w with the idea of this deck. So I think that's a, a good combo there. Yeah, I mean, I love lizards because, what, you, you always have an option of going mass lizard. You always have double pronged attacks. You always have flanks. You always have base trades. It opens up the game. It, it really, you, you could play the game one way, but if you just have one unit in your deck, you could play the game five other ways. So, I mean, that's why I always play lizards, because I just think they're so much fun. Yeah, that's that's fair. They're, they're strong. Um and they give you so many options, some of which are map dependent, which is fine, and some of which are less map dependent. So it looks like um, there's a couple of different ways we could go about this, but one deck that might work out, I've got set here is Squirrel Toad, or sorry, Squizzard, Squirrel Lizard, Falcon, man, I can't talk. I'm looking right at it here. Let me start over. Squirrel Lizard, Pigeon, Mole, Skunk Snake. And the only weakness is that we don't have toads, which are so good against clumped up enemies and against lizards, which is a, is a real weakness. 
But some of this, and of course the late game, absolutely nothing. But some of the strengths is we only have two tier two units to try to tech up to. We only have two units that you need heavily microed, and that's the moles and the lizards. Um, and defending, depending on the fight, you could kind of pick one or the other. You've got one unit that can join later on, the moles. Um, you've got a couple of subcomps in there, which is the skunk pigeon or the snake pigeon. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd be inter interested to see this similar idea be played out a bit more. And, and moles are still going to be not amazing in the next patch, I think. But we might see people playing with stuff like this more to try to take down the tier 3 greed that seems to be pretty stable and pretty standard right now. Does that seem like a pretty good overview? Uh, yeah, and I, I actually, when I play this build, I, I move Mole over to Toad, and I actually a ton. For like a week, it was like the only build that I played. So you did Squizzo of, then? I did Squizzo, right. Instead of Mole, I had Toad. And, and what I found was uh, it's extremely hard to set up, and the micro is challenging too, because like I said, you have to really engage from multiple angles. But essentially, after the fight is is all finished and everything is is uh, is done, what you have left over is both armies have been nearly wiped, but you have pigeon skunk snake, which is just in the back, and they survive, right? All your tier one's been wiped out, their army's been wiped out, but if you just have a couple pigeons and a skunk and a snake, then that'll let you sustain and push through to victory. And we've got a lot of squizzoed players that in the community that just love the squirrel lizard toad combo it's hard but there are quite a few players i know shen Chase in the chat he mentioned it and i've seen him do it he loves squizzoed um so there's definitely some enthusiasts that would go with that as well any other closing thoughts on that one satoros yeah i think uh the way we ended up making the deck at least the mole variation there is a lot of plays you can make from the very beginning of the game until again the mid game uh because you can just do you know a uh, squizzard opening and if they if they get really gritty like they expand and try to take a tier two you just drop moles and then you squizzard with moles and you just completely obliterate them you don't even have to build pigeons or tier two like that that's just a super scary threat by itself and then obviously if it goes you know into a more normal game, that's where you can get the, the whole mix of units in there um, and kind of have your Skunk Snake Pigeon as your kind of closer with a bunch of other tier one. So yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Again, once moles are changed in the next patch, it'll I think it'll be quite good. Sure, fair enough. All right, let me swap back to my uh, earlier setup here. Hopefully enough people are watching this and enough people try this build so we could uh get out of this t this tier three centric meta <laughs> yeah yeah let's let's band together as a community and make the tier three players jobs harder we don't want tier threes to be unviable obviously because you know they're fun and they're a big part of the game especially the the late game that we like to see as well but let's let's give them something to worry about when they go into a oh, game yeah. right <laughs> look a lot of these patches are about um forcing a cyclical meta uh <laughs> At least that, that's definitely what I've uh, seen from the times I've been playing. Because, you know, it's gone from very slow, methodical games to the mole patch where it was <laughs> dominant and, like, nobody ever did. Well, I shouldn't say nobody ever did Tier 3. But, like, the the vast majority of the play was around, you know, getting a second mill at all and then be able to get, like, a Tier 2 army. Because um, it's just so easy to punish people with moles. Um, yeah, that was the the Erlu days, right? Because his style yeah, exactly. of play just lent itself to that so well. But then moles got removed from the game, and you know now all of a sudden we have these super long macro games with tier three and everything. And now again, I hope it's going to swing back the other way, but not as extreme. <laughs> again, there's still going to be some food loss from moles, so I think they're going to be definitely more balanced than when they were during the heirloom patch they were definitely way too good um but yes. i think they're going to be more viable so at least it'll be easier to punish greed yeah um, it's kind of especially big tier three greed i, I think uh, you're shooting for the in-between for sure anyway yeah my my two word review ready last patch attacking op this patch defending op 
Yeah, that's a good point. Defender's advantage strong now, attacker's advantage with moles. So now we'll have to see, is it still defender's advantage a little bit? Is it not really either? Does it depend on the deck? You know, we'll have to see. Yeah, and I, just real quick, because I know somebody out there might know about this, but uh, the one of the reasons why I think having food be lost when you build a mole is, is still really important to have, or at least a good idea, is because not only were moles really good for attacking during the heirloom patch, but they were also really good at defending yep. because they came out instantly. So like once the meta game evolved to the point where everybody was taking moles and people knew the mole timing, you know, timing attack, so they weren't just losing their base, <laughs> you know, to trying to expand. Um, it got to the point where moles were actually just just as powerful as defensive tools. Um, again, all of a sudden you realize you were slightly behind on tier one. Bam, you could just throw down two mole warrens and you'd have stuff to defend in time. So. Uh, again, I I, st I do think that it's good that moles aren't as strong as they used to be. The, again, there's still some food loss. There's still some downside of trying to use moles in a longer game, but I'm hoping it'll be a nice, better middle ground. Yeah, it'll be nice to actually see that unit able to be used again. Uh, Keepa, I just want to say the chat has exploded. They didn't like your attacking OP summary, but we're going to leave it there at a uh, controversial uh. statement. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, so moving on here, um, we've got a update for a couple of un upcoming events. I'm going to real quick mention 21 Duels is live, uh, and I am the first boss, so everybody involved has to get through me first, and uh, tomorrow I will be available most of the day, and I'll get a bunch of those knocked out, so hit me up anytime before the American Pokemon Cup. I should be around, um, and we will get some of those games played and get you guys onto the uh, later bosses if you can get past me. Um, and then we've got Kipo's King of the Hill. And right uh, after that, we're going to have our tier list edit and that'll be that'll be the show. So Kipo, take it away with King of the Hill. I just sent you an image in um, through Discord, if you could throw it up. Before I get into King of the Hill though, I really do want to give a special shout out to Tiki gray i don't know if y'all caught this but uh last week tiki decided uh to continue with his tooth and tail youtube channel tiki gaming i could drop a link in the chat in just a moment and Tiki actually reviewed the first championship series that was ever played the first pnc championship he took the final game and he casted and analyzed them uh, they were including players such as erlu and dino and a bunch of other uh, really cool old school players. So if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, I would definitely give it a give it a you know a playthrough. It's really interesting to watch his analysis of the first championship. Absolutely, uh, and we'll be getting him on here at some point as a guest as well. Oh, that's that's going to be a blast. So this is the King of the Hill tournament. I'm just going to give a super quick update and go through this. Last week we had Tatanka take out Night Slayer. We had this guy take out Fleur de Lays. We had Cactus overtake Snake. And we had Pyro, or his Latin, take out Lupus. So congratulations to the current Kings, Pyro, Cactus, and Tatanka, all with two wins. And this week, well, really in an hour and a half, uh, I'll be hosting the third set of games, which will include this guy versus Trumpet, which I'm really excited for that game. That's going to be really hype because they are they don't really abide by standard metagame rules. I feel like this guy and Trumpet kind of have their own way of seeing and playing the game. So that's going to be a pretty good series. And then we have Cactus versus Leon, which I think is going to be fantastic as well. Both really good players. And we should have Pyro versus Tanner. I'm not sure if they want to play live. I think I got the replays pretty recently. If not, we'll save it for next week. And then unfortunately, Meek versus Tatanka, which is the game that absolutely everyone, including myself, is just dying to see. I mean, those are probably the best two players in the world. Uh, we're going to have to wait, guys. I'm so sorry. But they'll be playing once this patch comes out and once this um, this bug is fixed. Yeah, it's so the Mac bug that, again. 
Yeah, that's King of the Hill and uh, Satoros and Heartseed. You guys are here. You guys will probably be up soon. Uh, and then on the other end, Sen says you're here as well. Uh, you'll probably be playing next week as well. Yeah, I think I saw Goros and Eel in the chat a bit earlier as well. So, yep, there you go, ah, guys. Yes. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right, let me pull up here. Let me uh, uh, keep looking. Give that'll be in an hour and a half. You say about? Yeah, six six p.m. Uh, Eastern Eastern yeah, EDT. Okay, give me a moment, guys. I'm gonna pull up the uh, the tier list here, and we'll get that going. Okay, I think I've got it pulled up here. Yes, there it is. Ta-da. And I think I can zoom in as well. All right, so there's our list right now. Um, that's where we left it last week. And I think uh, Satoru said left by that point. So it was just Kipo and I that made a slight adjustment. So let's make another adjustment here each. Um, just think of something to keep Keep it moving a little bit, and we'll get some input on from the chat, maybe. Um, either of you two want to go first with some thoughts here? Uh, otherwise, I can kind of summarize where we're at. What, do you remember the change we made last week? Uh, we had a couple of units move into the B, I believe. Let me pull up. Um, I think I posted it in here. Yeah, so I, I think what we did is we we put the uh, the badger from C class up to B, and we brought uh, the balloon down from A into B. So a couple of uh, changes into B. That's the most recent changes. I think I have uh, I have three viable changes. I could start us off if you guys want. Why don't you just throw the three out, and we won't commit to any of them yet. Uh, and we'll see if one of the two of us has a concrete one, then we'll go back to you and see if you can pick. I don't think Kasha should be on the same level as, say, Wolf or, say, Badger or, say, Pigeon. Uh, I, I think Kasha might be the worst Tier 3 right now. So I think that's something worth thinking about. Uh, in a similar vein, I think Chameleon's probably the worst Tier 2 right now. Um, I don't know if they're as bad as ferret and uh, and um, artillery, but I think I think chameleon might be kind of weak. And I mean, I know the chat's gonna disagree. I know Satoris, you might disagree too, but I don't think Falcon is as good as Snake. Uh, I don't think Falcon is as good as Lizard or Owl. So I wouldn't mind moving Falcon down either. All right, those are those three suggestions. Satoros, any uh, any thoughts um, on what suggestions you would make to change? Well, it's funny. I actually, I thought of two of those three changes, but I was going to make a different change than any of the ones you suggested. Um, but yeah, real quickly to go through those, I I think I I think I agree that Kash is the worst tier three right now, but I only think that's because of the meta game. I think if Tatanka didn't. If, I think if Tatanka didn't exist, I think Kasha would be, like, fine. Like, obviously, Owls are good. Uh, owls are arguably the best tier 3 right now, so obviously it's not, like, a great look for Kasha. But I think Kasha is still really strong. I mean, if your opponent... Basically, if your opponent doesn't have an Owl and you have a Fox and you're able to, like, you know, clear both armies, the Fox can easily single-handedly still win you the game. Um in a lot of cases. So I, I think it's definitely viable. I agree. I think it's probably the worst tier three, but I, I don't think in, I don't think it necessarily deserves to be in C tier. Um, I, I wouldn't be greatly offended if that was the case, but I don't, I don't think that's the change I would make. Uh, chameleons, uh, funnily enough, I do think chameleons should be in C tier. I think I do agree with that one. It's just because toads are too good. Like, why would you build chameleons? The one of the strengths of chameleons is the fact that they absolutely obliterate lizards. Um, and look, 
chameleons are still just good against you know squirrels in the open field and stuff but they're not that great at attacking into you know mills and into an opponent's base and stuff like that so the fact that they've lost like the if i think about what toads do and what chameleons do toads do a lot of what chameleons do except better and they're a tier one i don't know that's just kind of the feeling i get so i i haven't seen a whole lot of like reason to bring chameleons uh with the current patch so well let me just interject um, snakes counter camp so hard as well just to, yeah to that's you and snakes are very popular so that's definitely a, a metagame reason but yeah i i chameleons are just in an unfortunate spot right now i think honestly i think they'll get played more once toads are nerfed but uh, and then falcons i don't know i still think falcons are good um Again, people are doing bigger things than Falcons. Like, Falcons, again, are kind of like one of the late game things you can be aiming for. It's just that Owl, and especially Wolf Owl, just seems to be the preference right now. So it kind of overshadows what Falcons are doing, but I still think Falcons are really good. Um, so I, I think they're fine where they are. Yeah, and, I was and gonna... don't forget the Boar Falcon combo, right? Yeah, Boar Falcon is still a real build. Like, um, if you're playing anyone except Tatanka, like, you could just play Boar Falcon against their Wolf Owl, and you're, you could actually be okay. Obviously, you might be at a slight deck disadvantage, but like if you play better than them, you're still going to win. Even uh, Melvin Fro pretty much was on a knife's edge and almost beat Tatanka with his uh, Owl Wolf when Melvin Fro played uh, Boar Falcon. It was yeah. very, very close. Yeah, so I, I still think that's a real build, um, even if it's slightly worse right now. Uh, I was actually going <laughs> to possibly offend a lot of people and suggest that barbed wire gets put down to B tier. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just because I haven't seen a lot of defenses in general, but I, I just... And also, I feel partially like... Um, how do I say this? It's another effect of Toads being good. I just don't think barbed wire is as powerful in its niche uh as it was um i don't know like i i haven't seen a whole lot of like high level decks utilizing wire um to like really great effect especially in the last like month i obviously i you know i think it's very viable i don't think it's bad or anything like that but i would probably put it in the same category as a lot of the other defenses it's just not uh, not a super strong unit that really um, can, you know, elevate a deck to a higher level like a lot of the other A tier units can. So that that's probably the change I would make personally. I, I like it. I mean, barbed wire is the linchpin behind the triple tier three strategy: barbed wire, squirrel, skunk, and then yeah. insert insert three tier threes, which is still insane. But, you know, really, I think static defense just in general right now is not meta. I mean, we've seen that from Tatanka and other players as well that are saying, I can play a defensive macro game without picking a single static defense, right? Um, they're, they're more niche. They're not as well-rounded uh, as, as just the, you know, your base unit composition, your base army units. So a static defense is in a weird place, and and I could definitely see barbed wire not being, you know, next to uh, snake and lizard and owl, right? Yeah, so, you you bring up a good point about the triple tier three deck is still a very strong deck. So thank thank you for bringing that up. I did I did kind of uh, did kind of forget about that, but that's basically the only deck that I see. And that's that's definitely a very narrow, very specific deck, and you're right. In that deck, barbed wire is very essential, um, but it's definitely not a general purpose unit right now. Yep. So let let me see what I'm thinking here. Um, I, I'm seeing just overall for the curve of this uh, chart as a useful chart. It is too much in B and there's not enough in C. So I'm thinking about which units in B could be dropped down a peg to kind of round out this as a more even uh, curve. And I'm looking, pigeons are good. We were just talking about how they've got a lot of uses. Wolf is amazing. Cams, I don't think cams are C, despite what both you guys are saying. They're still decent in some hands, but 
the, they don't stick out to me in this B list as the ones that need to go down the most. The Fox. I haven't seen her in so long. For Besides, like, one game as kind of a novelty. So she seems to be not necessarily her own fault, but just kind of a victim of the meta. Not being strong against what people are playing and not being what people want to play. So I could definitely see the Fox dropping. Um... Of the other four, I could see turrets being dropped because of all of the structures, they're one of the least played. Like you see wire sometimes, they're good against lizard rushes and they're good for the triple tier three thing. Balloons are a thing, we see them fairly frequently. Mines are occasionally still used, but really turrets I'm not seeing used. So I could drop either the fox or the turret down to see myself. Um, as for falcons, I like them back up in A. Um, there are other things that do the same job slightly better, but I still see them with pretty striking regularity, so I... and to decent effect, especially in combo with other things like a tier 3 with falcons. Uh, like badger falcon or boar falcon, or even... I've seen owl falcon work really well if somebody didn't want to go with the wolf. So I don't know if I'd drop them down to be myself. But those are my thoughts. Let's go back to Kipo, and, and why don't you just... What do you think in here and make your make your uh, change? Problem, I love the MG. I, I I play it a lot, even though it doesn't help me very often. Oh yeah, problem, I, I love it too. Just gonna throw the problem out. is the snakes are so prevalent in today's meta, and if your opponent has a snake, your MG is basically useless. Um, I'm looking at MG and I'm looking at mine, and I can't figure out which one is more niche. And which one is just a, will give you better value as a whole? Um, I don't know. What do you think, Satoros? I, I I see mines and MGs at a similar power level right now. Uh, I think they're both uh, not utilized very much, but also just not that powerful. Uh, I definitely think mines give you a lot more utility, and that might be obvious. You can put them wherever you want. They give you vision, stuff like that. But MGs, MGs are actually good at like holding a front. Um, obviously, they're not good against snakes, so you can't just build MGs and say, "Hey, I'm defended now." That's definitely not how it works. Like, you can't just brute force MGs and expect it to to be good. But especially in this meta. But I do think MGs still have their use. Like, they're still excellent uh, emergency defense. Um, they're still very good at quite frankly holding a line against owls like you you get a wall of mgs that's actually pretty effective um that you know they're still good at you know containing stuff like that so they they definitely have their uses i agree they're not they're not particularly strong in this meta but i think they're fine in b tier personally um yeah I, <laughs> it's funny after all of this talking i'm starting to agree with what kippo said on um, both uh kasha and cams like uh because those were two of the three you said, right? Yeah, Kasha just being moved. Yeah, just moving down to C tier. I, I think those two do make a lot of sense. They're just unfortunately not not well placed in this patch or meta. Let, let me make one real quick case for the mine. Uh, it's kind of similar to what Sotaros was saying. Between mine and turret, turret is a good fighting unit, but it's not that great, especially against snakes. Just overall, other things do the same thing better in a lot of ways. Mines, on the other hand, do have other uses. So, like Sotaros was saying, they're more utility. So I would drop turrets and not mines because mines have other utility purposes outside of just a fighting unit, right? The, my thing with mines is that they're, they're hard to pull off. You'll often see a player build mines, and then by the end of the game, half of them are still sitting on the map, right? So it's like, well, they didn't really serve any purpose. They weren't really that useful since it's just sunk cost at that point. Once your opponent knows that you have mines, they're going to play the entire game differently, right? I mean, the first mine hit is always going to be the best mine hit, but after that, they just have to be diligent. They have to lead with their high, you know, high HP units, maybe chameleons, maybe skunks, maybe boar, and they're they're generally, um, you know, the mine isn't that useful after that point. But it's, I don't know. It's hard to say which one is more useful. It really just depends on the the player who they're in the hands of and and the map that's being played and the unit composition i mean at the end of the day they're both kind of on the more niche side of things 
Yeah, I, it's funny because, uh, like, uh, uh, the the mental game with mines is one of the strongest parts in my opinion. So I actually think that's yes, they start playing the game differently, but that's that's an advantage for the mine player in my opinion because they have no idea how many mines you have or where they are. Like obviously they'll start scouting for them more often, um, but you're right that you won't get as at great mine hits, but I, I do think that's a, a definitely an advantage in the game. But honestly, I just see mines and turrets are very different units. Like if you try to hold a front with a ton of mines, like let's say there's only one attacking path and like they have to go through it. You can try to place mines down, but as soon as they know that you have mines, they're just going to keep their army out and like try to contest your mines all the time. Uh, and like it's not going to be easy to place a bunch of mines and even if you do mines are you know they're just one shot and they're gone so again particularly if we're talking about the metagame they get owls you're gonna be real upset that you have a giant minefield when they have owls um so uh, honestly i think one of the reasons i think mgs are just as strong as mines right now is because of the metagame partially um i, I think MGs match up against Owls a lot better. But also, MGs are just, again, I think they're better for, I need to hold this specific point, let me hold it. You can place a whole bunch of mines, but it's not usually quite as cost efficient. But the utility of the mines is obviously way better than the MG. So I, I think um, I think there's arguments for both, but I think they're similar power level. Alrighty, Kipo. What is the decision? Uh, <laughs> can we just move Kasha or the Chameleons down, maybe? Because <laughs> I, I, I Go for it. don't, one. I don't know if I could justify moving MG but not mine. Um, I, I, I'm gonna, I guess, stay. Kasha goes to C. All right, there you have it, Fox lovers yeah. out there. You know who to crucify. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it makes sense to me. It's just not seen as much lately. It, it's good as a unit, but we just. It's just not good against the way people are playing right now. And if somebody knows you have it, they're going to get structures and they're going to completely lock her out of much value at all. Yeah, and I, for if I get a pick, then I will definitely pick Chameleons as the other one. I, I, I do think after all of our discussion, those are the two units that should be moved down at this point. And unfortunately, again, I think just Toads do a lot of chame what Chameleons do better right now. So there's not really much of a reason to build them. That's true. And again, they're not bad. They're just not good against what people are playing. Toads beat them or do better. Snakes beat them. Um, skunks are better against tier one for the most part. And, and let's just remember, C tier units aren't bad. Like ferrets are there, but ferrets can be really good. We've seen a couple of games with some strong ferret play. They're just more niche and, and less generally useful in a, in a stable deck. So now... Yeah. <laughs> so now I've got the choice here. I think B is better. I'm actually thinking, what unit would be a contender to go up to S tier that is not already there? And I'm looking at Owls. Oh, it, it's got to be Snake, right? I think Snake too. You, yeah, you're, that, you're both thinking Snake. I don't think I don't think Owl goes up over Snake. I don't think because every like, okay, if we talk about what the top players are playing right now and what sees the most success. Obviously, to tank as L deck is successful, right? Yeah. But you know, there's other very high level players who are winning a lot of games with other decks. You know, with um, you know a late game board uh, Falcon sort of thing, or you know, even some crazy people like QQ doing like other, or even you know Heartseed doing like some siege strats. So there's other options, but most of the decks involve snakes. Like even people, even met like defensive standard players um who aren't playing owl they they pick snakes like That's snakes true. are i i i do think after a couple weeks here snakes are probably about the same level as skunks of how powerful they are in the uh, early to mid game um and i quite arguably i think snakes are even better than skunks in the late game uh in a lot of cases um but, That's true. Yeah, and you know I, what? I, if we move up snakes, we've got a very stable composition just with the S tier. I think I'm going to do it. Because right there, Squirrel, Toad, Snake, Skunk, we've been talking about this all episode. That army composition is very, very good. There's nothing that is... There's nothing that it can't beat. It's just very well-rounded and very strong. Yeah. So, I would agree. Nick, 
makes counter tier two and tier three like the best i think so i feel bad um and like a slight misrepresentation leaving lizards uh lower than squirrels and toads since generally speaking as far as the three tier one that everyone that everyone's picking goes they're all good you can make a game work with squizzard squizzard is amazing uh L pure lizard is good squirrel toad is good lizard toad is kind of okay and squizzode is a thing as well but i'm gonna justify it by saying pure lizard isn't that good and squizzard um you you can give squirrels a lot of that credit so i lizards might be the best a tier we've got right now on this list but i'm gonna i'm gonna leave them down i think the issue with lizards right now when you compare them to squirrel and toad is it's just lizards are more map dependent there are some maps where i don't even bother building them because it, the, the the map is a line there are small choke points there's no way to wrap around there's no way to flank there's no way to get into a backdoor entrance to your opponent's space whereas squirrel and toad they don't care about the map they're always going to be good and they're always going to be efficient yeah it's true and because of the prevalence of squirrel toad squirrel toad can handle anything a lizard player throws at them as long as they're paying attention and they don't get a really bad map or something uh, right when toads get used less than the next patch lizards i think are gonna definitely move right up right on up yeah yeah i yeah, i agree historically lizards have been map dependent on some maps they're not very good and some maps they're great um, but I think the reason why they're A tier and not S tier right now, or, well, actually, let me say, I think squirrels are S tier because uh, toads are S tier right now. I, I think normally squirrels and uh, and lizards are about the same level. But just right now with how strong toads are, uh, lizards are definitely deterred. I, I do want to say from the chat here, um, I did mention that lizards might be A tier because pure lizard isn't that great. Um, and we had in the chat, Toads, you have to have support with Toads. You can't go pure Toad either, but they're S-Class. And I, I want to defend yeah. that slightly. True, that's true. But I want to sure. defend that slightly by saying nobody tries to play Toads by themselves. Like, everyone knows that they're a support or a second tier one um, unit. Whereas pure Lizard can be used, and people do try it. Um, just like pure Squirrel isn't generally that good. It's... There are some times that it hurts, but it's generally not what you want to do. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess saying pure lizard isn't good is not a good reason to put lizard in A tier. But uh, Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, they make a valid point. You can't evaluate the unit just on how strong it is if you mass only that unit. I, obviously, that's not the case for a lot of niche units. Um, you know, like you're not going to mass wolves, right? But it doesn't mean wolf is terrible and unusable. Um, but... Yeah, I, again, I think it's because out of the three tier one right now, I think Toads are generally speaking the most powerful when you evaluate all of their performance against all other units, you know, and uh, what compositions they fit into. Uh, so, and I think because Squirrels both work better with Toads and match up better against Toads, I think that's the reason why Squirrels are up there in S tier. Yep, I'll buy it. Any uh, any closing words from either of you guys? I think we're going to wrap up the show here. No, I think the tier list is looking good. And um, Tandor, once again, thanks for having me on. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in and watching. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's always interesting to see how we change our opinions on the tier list. Uh, but I am looking forward to the next batch for sure. And I'm sure a lot of other people are. But... Uh, I am glad that the devs are spending their time trying to fix the Mac bug so people on Mac can actually play before they release the new patch. So I, I think they're making the right decision there. Um, and, you know, I just hope that gets resolved soon. And yeah, I think it was a good episode and uh, see y'all next week.